Drawer fronts. A lot of information. Another long one, folks. Welcome back to the shop and my channel and the continuing saga of building the armoire for Mara, which is hiding over here, away and out of, the, out of the way so I can do other stuff. This is the last load of cherry I need to pick up from C.P. Johnson Lumber in Culpeper, Virginia. Um, I had them plane this for me because I really needed it to come into the shop in its full length for reasons. So I've got three pieces. Uh, I got uh, um, just under 11 inches, a little over 11 inches, and 13 inches by 10 feet by three quarter inch milled. They've got this huge planer out there that does both sides. You set the thickness you want, you send the piece through, and it's done. So these are the pieces for the drawer fronts and uh, mostly for the drawer fronts and the rails and styles and the door panels for the door that's going to go in the middle. Uh, also, I think I'll have enough out of here for the crown molding, but I've got a spare piece of lumber over there I can use for that if I don't. Um, got my cut list, all my cut list drawings, so I know what to take out of what, keep my waist down to a minimum. The only other thing I need to buy, I think, will be the larger stock to turn the bun feet. And the bun feet are going to be about, oh, four and a half, five inches in diameter and about two inches tall. So I got to, and I have to turn those on the lathe. So what I need to do now is start cutting the parts out of this wood. Now, that's going to be a long, tedious process. I'm not going to film that. I will uh, come back. I'm st still in the same segment, the same video, but I'll, once I've got it cut out, we'll take it to the next step, which is cutting it to precise shapes to fit in the, the, door, the drawers, on the front of the drawers. Also, this will require building another jig. Since these are going to have the soft raised panel, and I'll show you what I mean when I cut them, instead of the, 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 the um, hard edged inside edge raised panels, I'm going to cut them on the table saw with a jig that I'll slide along my sacrificial vents. So the reason to do that is make sure I get consistency and the wood doesn't wander up and down and around when I'm trying to cut it, run it through the, the saw 15 degrees. So, let me cut some wood. Okay, these are all the parts for the drawer fronts, the front doors, rails and styles, panels, uh, top, the top, uh, you can see in the picture, top drawer fronts and the bottom drawer fronts and all the eight little ones. Uh, what I do need to cut out is uh, uh, long strips of quarter inch stock to make the beading, the bead that's going to go around all this stuff. So uh, I've got plenty of wood left over to do that with. In fact, I've got a nice chunk of cherry over here I'll figure out what to do with. So let me get on that, and then we'll start turning these things into drawer fronts. Now, I'll demonstrate running a piece of the cherry through the router table, which is still set up for when I did the test piece uh, to, um, to show the, the different types of drawer fronts we were considering. Now, what I meant earlier by a soft um, raised panel is there's no shoulder here. It's just a soft raised panel. I've got no, I didn't, the table saw will just clean it right off there. That, that's kind of a, the look we're going for. So now to do the strips, make the beading, and start building drawers, drawer covers, and doors. Oh, we got the hinges, by the way. To cut the uh, quarter inch pieces I need to make the beading, I'm using this tool that I got uh, from Amazon. There'll be a link in the description to, the, to a video of me demonstrating this. And I think if I can find it in Amazon, I'll link to the sale on Amazon, where it's sold on Amazon. But uh, um, since I did a video on it, I'll just do a quick rundown now how it works. It's real simple, actually. Put this in the miter slot, 
like so. It slides back and forth. And I have a gauge block from my Veritas gauge block kit, like that. And I set this up against the blade, get about get three teeth if I can on the gauge block, like so. Run this guide up against it and snug it down. Now the guide is tight, but I can still slide it back and forth. So now take this out, slide it back to about here, tighten it down. And the way it works is I take my my workpiece, bring it up against the guide, and and cut and then move it over, cut, move it over, cut, move it over, cut, move it over, cut. Yeah. 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 So they're all a quarter inch. Might be a, a line width or something more, but that's okay. I can live with that. It'll work. So the next thing to do is to, to cut the beads on these, and I'll demonstrate a couple of those, and then we'll go on from there making the, uh, the, door, the uh, drawer fronts. And here at the router table, a quarter inch beading bit that is set dead center to a piece of quarter inch stock. The stock rides up against the fence, not the bearing, obviously. A hold down featherboard and a hold to the fence featherboard. Um, we don't really need an outfeed featherboard. It's not, not an issue. So I'm going to take a piece of stock. I'm going to run it in and back out again. I know you're not supposed to pull it back out, but I'll run it in and out so I can show you what this is going to look like. and round it over and I have about a bazillion more of these to do and that's going to be the stock that will surround the raised panel drawer front to give it that depth and that uh, eye appeal. I'm all set up ready to go got the dust collection turned on and ready for um, for the router table because I've got you know all these gates and everything. All my wood is stacked over here so I can just grab it and run it through fairly easily and then um, once I'm done We'll move on to the next step, which is building the drawers. More on that later. So let's make some bead, beaded things, bead, bead, bead things. And there you have it. It was actually very simple. It's basically, getting the setup right is the hard part. So these are all ready to go. I've got the bead on them. Now I need to um, uh, fit each one individual to the drawers. Now, I have to bring this over here so I can work on it back and forth. The thing is, these uh, drawer fronts are made small, uh, oversized. Not smaller, oversized. And I need to trim each one to a size plus the quarter inch piece of bead detail to go into each 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 slot where the where each box where the uh, drawers are and then fasten them to the drawers and these of course are going to be mitered in place so this that's finicky bits i've got a little tiny model makers miter box but it uh it was very cheap and it doesn't work very well so i probably will wind up doing these on shop saw which means a lot of sneaking up so let's uh let's let's move on move everything out of the way, put everything over there, and start fitting the drawer fronts to 
the front to the to the box. Oh, by the way, once I've got each drawer front adjusted to the right size for the individual opening plus the quarter inch on all the way around, I'll then go ahead and make the raised panel portion. I think I need to make it. That's what I need to make a jig for. So onward and upward and to the next step. First, what I've done is I've matched the grain on the uh, the drawer fronts. So this piece of wood was cut in half and became these two pieces, the same here, 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 and all the way down. You won't notice it here and here, really, because they're too far apart, but you will notice it on the, the um, top two drawers and the lower four drawers. To start this process to fit the drawer fronts in correctly, what I've done is I've taken the drawer front and I've taken some shims and kind of jammed it in place. And I'm going to measure down a little more than a quarter inch here and here and over from here into the piece and make some marks. And then what I'll do is um, I'll connect those marks and then cut this piece to allow for the bead detail to be fastened in place. But to make sure I've got everything correct, I've got some uh, shims made up of the same stock, which I can put in and around with a pinner. Uh, to make sure everything's correct and the door has a little room to breathe. The, the drawer front has a little room to breathe. So I'm going to mark these up and because of the vagaries in, wood, in, in building, there's a, there's a bigger gap here than here, but it's kind of clean right across here. So what I need to do is you mark it and then cut it off on all four corners and then test it. And once it's done, I'll cut the uh, the raised panels fasten on the uh, bead detail and then once I'm satisfied with all of that I'll fasten the drawer front to the drawer itself some pins in the front that hold it in place or some um, uh, double-sided tape on the, on the drawer itself and after that's done I'll take it out fasten it from the back and this drawer will be done. Now I'm going to do just one drawer on camera. Uh, go through the whole process on one drawer and then I'm going to do the rest of them off camera because long and long fiddly, finny, finicky, fiddly bits and uh, a little bit on the boring side. But So let's, let me uh, get started on this and we'll um, get this drawer front fastened to its drawer. Not sure if you caught it in that time lapse, but I drew the lines along the front face and then transferred those to the edge where I have to make the, so I can line up the cuts. They're not absolutely perfectly straight. They're just slightly angled a little bit here and there. Some are actually straight, but we'll work on that. I do have a, I do have a tapering jig, very nice tapering jig. The problem with this tapering jig, it will not handle a piece of wood that wide. So that goes back in its home. So I made a quick and dirty tapering jig that will hold the, the work pieces very well. I can put them on here, line up the lines at either end, and I'm going to use clamps from, close up, clamps from my CNC machine with some number 10 screws and a washer to hold them in place. But to do the initial alignment, I'm going to do it at the workbench with the hole fasts so that it won't move once I get it aligned and then I can screw it down and come and make the cuts. So let's take care of that now. I had to hold this up with some plywood because of the, the runner that's underneath there. And now I line this up. I have already cut this, so this is, I know this is aligned with my blade. But I want to line this up like so. Oh, one thing I didn't forget to mention. <clears throat> I added a sixteenth of an inch to the quarter inch distance all the way around so, so I hopefully get a sixteenth of an inch uh, reveal or gap 
around each uh, front so it, it doesn't jam, weather changes, stuff like that. So that's right there. Give it a tap. And this one, there we go. Give it a tap. Now the, uh, the clamps for my CNC, the, the backrest is a half inch, so I've added a uh, quarter inch piece of plywood to hold it at a, at a more straight angle to the, to the workpiece. Oops, you know what I need? I need longer screws. So I got uh, some longer screws here. I'll move this over off that hole a little bit. Hopefully this won't poke through the other end. But I don't think so. Ooh, nice and tight. All right. Make sure that it didn't move at all. That's correct. And that's correct. All right, let's go make a cut. I have my Izzy Swan extension, table saw extension. Uh, hopefully I remember to put a link in the description. It's a really neat device. He manufactures these for a variety of table saws, but it allows me to take a piece like this and run it through nice. That looks good. So, um, oh, you know what? Noise, I need my ear protection. Okay, that demonstrates how I'm going to do this. I'll finish this up, get all the cuts done, and then we'll uh, do the, uh, the raised panel portion, the portion of this. And for that, I have to make a jig. So I'll make a jig and then put it on camera and show you how I made it, what, how, what, how the jig works. But it's just to keep things, um, you know, mo not moving as you slide them along the sacrificial fence. So let's cut, let me cut some more sides off of this thing and see how it comes out. Trimmed. Nicely. Um, I put the quarter inch pieces on to see how the fit's going to be. I slide it in place and jack it up with my fingers and it looks like I've got a sixteenth of an inch or maybe a little more, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's going to fit very nicely. So now I can go ahead and cut the raised panels and put the, uh, the beading on it. We're getting there folks, we're getting there. In the annals of doing stupid things while filming, I did a stupid thing. I filmed this segment, but the microphone wasn't on my shirt. It was over there on the camera. So I'm pantomiming that segment all over again because I've already made the cuts. But this will give you a good description of how I did it and the tools I'm using. And the first one is the jig that I made. It uh, is designed to fit right on snugly, but not too snugly, onto the sacrificial fence like so. It goes all the way down to the bench and to, to the table saw. Um, it has a shelf here where the clamps are connected and it slides very nicely past the table saw, past the blade. Note that the, uh, the blade is not high enough to connect contact the metal saw stop, you know. So when you make your end cuts, end, end grain cuts, you have to stand the board up, lay it down on your table saw and just slide it back. Tip, since everything here is not absolutely square, there's little variances. Let the table saw be the datum for the cut. That'll match what's over here. So you lay down the table saw, just shove it back to where it stops, and that just like that, and then clamp it in place. Bingo. Then, when you're ready, you make a cut. Turn the table saw on, 
and run through this, run through about that speed. Don't slow down or stop when cutting cherry, maple, and a couple other woods. You'll get burning. That's what I've discovered. That's what I think most of you already know. Uh, if you slow down or stop going through the blade, you could get burning. Also, having a very sharp blade, a clean blade, helps a great deal. I clean the blade off about once a month. So then unclamp. And there it is. Uh, I did get a little bit of burning here. Not a big deal. I'll sand that off. So there it is. One raised panel. I now have to put the uh, bead detail on, which is going to be finicky because I have to miter each corner and the miters have to be dead on perfect. Um, they will be fastened in place with glue and, 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 and uh, pins. So let me get on that. And then uh, I guess after that, we'll end the video and um, finish all these off off camera. I've done one already. Got it right to the, nice to the edge here. Now I'm going to do the next long one, and then I'll do the short ones. So this is where it gets really interesting. I've already cut the 45 here, so I want to measure where I need to cut the next 45. And the way you do that, so what I'm doing here is I'm aligning this 45 so it's right on that where that corner is, with no gaps and no catches. So then I go down the other end. I've already done the mark, but I'll do it again. Make sure it's lined up and then mark this end. That's where the 45 has to go and the 45 has to go this way. So I want to mark straight across at the end. I don't know if this will show up on camera, but I marked where this line ends and then what direction the cut has to be in. And now I can sneak up on that and then fasten it down to this with glue and with pins. So I got, got some, most of this done, you know, I, not of it all on camera. Well, I'll do this end piece on camera. So I'm going to cut a piece to, and sneak up on it to fit in here. Then we'll go over to the bench and we'll go ahead and, and glue and, and nail that glue and pin it in place. And then this one will be done and ready for mounting on the drawer itself. I've already cut the first 45 on this. Now I want to measure to where the next cut will be. And it's going to be right there. Oop. Wrong 45. There's a knot there, so. I'm gonna wrap this around the bead because that's what's gonna be exposed when I make the cut. Uh, nope, I take that back. That's not gonna be exposed because I'm doing this in the reverse. The flat will be exposed to the blade. There we go, so now Let's just cut this off, proud of that line. See how far I need to go. Perfect. You see what I mean when I say finicky? These are finicky little bits. So let's go over the bench and then glue this piece on. Yeah, that's great. Now, I put a small bead of glue along here, like I said earlier. Just a tiny little bead, you don't need much. No load on this thing. And that's it. And then, tap it down. Take the workpiece and press it up against, like so, and then pin it in place. And there it is. So now I've got bead detail all the way around, raised panel, and it's ready to go in the, the drawer. On the drawer, let's check the fit, and we'll move from there. That's pretty darn good. Yeah, that's gonna be, now I'll shim it in place when I go to place the, uh, when I do the uh, thing with the, with the uh, double-sided tape. 
Okay, um, double-sided tape, as expected. Hopefully I can peel it off easily. This is actually carpet tape, I think. Mara uses it in a lot of uh, her wood turning stuff on the, on the lathe. So what I've got here is I've got a little 16th inch shim sitting right here on the cherry. And what I need to do now is be very carefully place this with the upside up without pushing it in place yet. Get it centered where I want it. Like that. And so that's it. Cool. Now, for safety's sake, drawer. Now let's fasten, fasten it from the back. So I've got um, three number eight screws by one inch. A snappy bit. And now I'm going to mount, be out of the way of the, where the hardware is going to go. That's it. That's perfect. Why is this doing that? It shouldn't be doing that. Oh, I see why. That's the wrong bit. But anyway, you see what's going on here. I've got it. I've got it um, mounted in and, and uh, mounted on place permanently now. So let's go mount it in the uh, in the cabinet. A little tricky. There it is. Click and push. Voila. A drawer. Let's bring it in close a little bit. So this is what they're all going to look like. This has this particular one has some nice rays in it so that when I do the finish it's going to look pretty good. So I'll finish the rest of these up. Hopefully I won't drop them on the floor like I just did. And um, then we can work on, and then we'll uh, work on the, draw the doors. So uh, we'll end this video here. Um, until next time, make great things out of wood.